Hey, glad you came back. So, um, I'm making some uh, ribs, right? Beef ribs. Beef supposed to be spare ribs, but you're gonna find out they're not spare ribs. It must be a new guy at the butcher, but it's not spare ribs. But it's ribs nonetheless. Um, but I'm making a sauce for them, a red wine reduction sauce. Okay, and this is what we got. Yeah. I know it's not much because I reduced it down to nothing because I wanted it to be very, very flavorful. It's real simple. I hope you enjoy it. Watch the show. Hey, this is Charles Sharon. That's the best elevated music I ever heard. All right, so now for the red wine reduction, what we're gonna have is, we have about two garlic cloves here, right? We have one red onion that we've sliced up, okay? We have one cup of beef broth, and we have one cup of red wine, okay? Let's start off by sauteing the onions, and the garlic. Alright, let's turn the heat on. Medium to medium high. Add a little bit of olive oil to this. Now just a couple of tablespoons, right? If we need more, we can get more. Now, I didn't mention it before, but I'm also going to add some butter to this because I want to give it that richness. Well, let's add our onions. Now, you can use shallots if you want, or you could even use white onions or yellow onions. It's up to you. I'm using the red onions because I want to keep the color all the same. At the end, it's really not going to matter. I just really like the flavor of the red onions, to be honest with you. And if you watch my videos, you know that. All right, we add a little salt to this. A little bit of kosher salt. You know, I don't really do the iodized salt. A little bit of kosher salt. And I'm gonna add some black pepper, ground black pepper. Well, this is to taste. You could use white pepper if you want, that's up to you. Just let this go for a bit, soften up a little bit. Maybe a little caramelization, not much, just a little bit. Now we're gonna add our garlic. Saute that in there. And again, if you're not a fan of garlic, don't put too much in. If you love garlic, hey, add more. It's up to you. This is your dish when you make it. All right? As soon as we see the garlic, when you can smell the aroma of the garlic and you see it just slightly start to caramelize, and then we're going to add the red wine but you notice I keep moving it around to slow down that caramelization just a little bit because I want the oil that's in the pan to pick up that flavor before it caramel caramelizes you see little trick that I've picked up over the years
but even though you're moving it around, it's still going to caramelize. So, I mean, you can't stop it. But in moving it around, it slows it down a little bit. Not much, but just enough. Okay. Now we want to add a red wine. Yep, add that all in there. And you really want this to reduce so it's almost like a, almost like a, a, a syrup almost. Okay. If you're using a white pan like I'm using, it's not going to take that long, really. And any bits that were left on the bottom of the pan are going to get, uh, they're going to come up and be deglazed at this, at this time. So you don't have to worry about that. See, as I'm moving the bottom of the pan, it's clean. See that? See that? It's clean as I move it. Just clean. So now we're going to let this reduce. It's going to take a few minutes. So be patient. It's going to take a few minutes. Because it has to evaporate, you see. You want to cook the alcohol out of this. Right? Especially if you're going to be feeding this to children. You know, you don't want any stumbling, bumbling kids all around, even though they might enjoy it. You don't want that. That's highly frowned upon. Like I said, we want to reduce this down to it's a nice little syrup. Almost to the point where it's almost gone, to be honest with you. I mean, best case scenario. Get all that flavor just reduced and packed in there. Now, if you don't have red wine, you can use sherry. Sherry will work. Also, marsala will work too. If you're in a pinch and just want to get it done, sherry and marsala, those two will work as well. I wouldn't go for the red wine vinegars. Because going, it's going to be too much tang once it reduces for this application here. But, you know, some people might like that. You never know. Like I said, it's your dish. Make it yours. Libations. This is where you have to have patience. You got to have patience. Gotta have patience. Look at that. See that? So I can move it. You can see the bottom of the pan. See how it's reducing? But I want it to reduce a little bit more. At this point, the alcohol is pretty much cooked out of it. Now you just have the flavor of the wine. Yeah, this is what we want. There we go. Now we're going to add our beef broth to this. And our beef broth. And now we're going to let this reduce till it thickens up. Yep, let it reduce. And it's done reducing. Well, for me, once I do like this, and I can see the bottom of the pot for two to three seconds, it's done for me. So see this, I do this, it covers up very fast. Nope, not ready yet. So it needs to hold that separation for a couple seconds and then I know it's done. So just keep an eye on it. Do not 
walk away from this. Do not. Because what we're going to do when this is done, we're going to put this in a mason jar. Right? A canning jar. And this will hold in the refrigerator for a few days or in the freezer for about three to six months. So you can cook it ahead if you want to. Now, if you don't want to reduce this, you can make a cornstarch slurry and thicken it up. I'm not doing that, but I mean, if you make it, hey, this is your dish. If you want to thicken it up, you know, for volume purposes, so you can keep all this, hey, go for it. But I'm just going to reduce mine down. See, I keep checking to see if it's going to fold into itself when I move it. Because at the end of this, we're going to be straining it. Libations. Look at that. See that? I pull. Right now we're about a half a second or so. So we're getting there. Because once it's just about where I want it, I'm going to add some butter to it. I'm going to drop the heat and add butter to it. So I can get that velvety texture and that flavor, give it that body. Now in the proportions that I've made, it's not going to make a lot of sauce. Okay. So you want to keep that in mind. So if you have to double this recipe, triple it, quadruple it, hey, make it work for you. I mean, and right now, you know, we're just myself, Mama Shaw, rest of the peanut gallery, hey, they moved out on us, so. You know, it is what it is. I mean, they come through every now and again when they want some food or whatever, but we're pretty much empty nesters at this point. What I need to do is start over. So having said that, hey, submit your, your applications in and I'll review them. We'll see what we got. Yeah, see that? Now we're ready for the butter. So now, turn the heat off. Let me show you again. Look at this. When I pull it, see how long it takes the liquid to fill in? That's what we want. See how long it takes? Look at that. Now we add the butter. We're going to add three tablespoons in, one tablespoon at a time. Mix it up with the heat off. Get all nice and mixed in there. Because you, if you add it all at one time, it's going to break. You don't want that. You want it to have a nice little sheen to it. And we're going to strain this into a mason jar. Which means, when you need to use it again, just take the lid off the mason jar and you can pop it in the microwave to heat it back up. Okay, let's add another knob. Mix it in. And once we add the third knob, we're going to strain this. So just take your time, melt it down, whisk it in. See, look, see how much, see how reduced it is? Look, you can see the bottom of the pan. See that? That's what we want. But the butter is going to give it, like I said, a richness and a body to it. Okay. And one more knob of butter, one more tablespoon of butter. Now let's mix this in. Now 
Yep, look how rich, thick this is. And that's what we want. So I'm gonna mix it so all the butter is melted. The heat is off. So the cooking process is basically done. We just melt the, but the butter to make it richer. Make sure it's well incorporated. Oh yeah. Now let's strain this bad boy. Okay, let's start straining this in here. Like I said, for the recipe I'm making, it's not gonna make a lot, right? Cause it's just Mama Shaw and I, so. This will work. Right? Let that let that drain. Okay, just kind of mush it around, press it so that all the juice, all the sauce drains into it. Put the strainer on here because we don't need this anymore. let's see what we got I mean it's not much but we already knew that from the beginning so I'm just making this for two look at this that's all we're getting out of all that that's all we got but it's gonna work let me get some tasting chopsticks here give me a final taste mm-hmm Oh my goodness, man, buttery, flavorful. I know you guys are gonna love this. Wow. So let's close this one out. All right, so the sauce is done, right? This is what we got, right? Just a little bit, not much, but it's powerful, okay? It's gonna really enhance the meat that you put this on, which you'll see here probably in the next video. Right now, the ribs are still out there on the smoker, but this is what we got. If you like this recipe, give me a thumbs up. Right? Wait, how do I see it? Give me a thumbs up. Yay, up. If you're not already subscribed, hey, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Hey, you know our arms are open. We'll keep the light on for you so you can always find us in the dark. Also, if you could, share me out. And if we're not connected on Instagram, I mean, come on, go to Instagram, put my name in, Shra Shra, look for the great cat and let's connect. That being said, this is Shra Shra. Got my sauce here. I'm gonna put these ribs together. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.